All right, we want to talk about the solar constant, and we'll talk about how to derive the solar constant at the Earth uh, from the Stefan Boltzmann law. And the solar constant will tell us how much power is available per square meter of surface at the Earth. So here is the sun, and here's the Earth. And this number is useful for satellites going around the Earth because you can then figure out how much power you will get from the solar panels that are on those satellites. Um, that number that we'll come up with, if you want to use it at the Earth's surface, you have to take into account some losses from the atmosphere, which I indicate here by the uh, blue around the Earth. And the atmosphere will reduce the number that we calculate. And uh, I'll try to remember to say something about that towards the end. And of course, this diagram that I'm showing here is not to scale. And a friend of mine, Brick Henderson, he always liked to point out on his diagrams that things were not to scale. So in honor of Rick, we have not to scale. All right. We're going to use the Stefan Boltzmann law, and I've written that down here. We're talking about a power density. And by density here, I mean something per meter squared, not density in the normal way that you think per unit volume. So it's per meter squared. It's per surface area. And the sigma here is the Stefan Boltzmann constant. T is the temperature, and it's raised to the fourth power. Now, the Stefan Boltzmann constant is equal to 2 pi to the fifth, k to the fourth, 15 c squared, and divided by 15 c squared h cubed. And those constants I've listed here, c for the speed of the light, h, Planck's constant, and k is Boltzmann's constant. And if you plug those numbers in, you get 5.67 approximately times 10 to the minus 8 watts per meter squared per Kelvin to the fourth power. And it's called the Stefan Boltzmann law because Stefan came up with it from some experimental ev evidence in the uh, around 1880 or thereabouts. And then Boltzmann, he actually derived it from basic theory. So that's why it's called the Stefan Boltzmann law. So in order to do this calculation, we'll start out for the sun. We'll do the calculation for the sun. So we need the sun's temperature, which we have here. So it's going to be Boltzmann, Stefan Boltzmann's constant, 5.67 times 10 to the minus 8th watts per meter squared, Kelvin to the fourth power, and we're going to multiply that by the sun's temperature in Kelvin to the fourth power. Fourth power. And if we work those numbers out, we'll get approximately 6.31 times 10 to the 7th watts per meter squared. Now, what does that mean? Let's say that this is the sun. That number represents the power coming out of every square meter on the sun's surface. So every square meter all around the sun, that is the amount of power in watts that's coming out of each square meter on the sun's surface. We can now, since it's per square meter on the sun's surface, we can figure out the total power that's coming from the sun. 
we won't write the density down here now. We understand it to be total. So we take the value for each square meter and we multiply that times the surface area of the sun which will be 4 pi r squared where r is the radius of the sun and I've shown the diameter here so if you divide this number by 2 and put it in here and multiply things out you will get 3.85 times 10 to the 26th watts. So that is the total power being put out by the sun. So here's the sun again. And let's try to imagine a surface, a sphere around the sun, equal to the distance of the uh, sun to the earth. So let's, let's, let's imagine that we make a little window on this sphere so we can look inside and we see the sun in there. And Here's the Earth's orbit going around. And all of this power now goes all the way out to the Earth's orbit and it's all spread over the sphere with a radius equal to the distance from the Sun to the Earth. So what we can do now is we can say that the that the sun the power from the sun at the uh, earth is going to be equal to that number 3.85 times 10 to the 26th watts the, over this entire surface area, which is going to be 4 pi r squared, where r here represents the Earth-Sun distance. So that will give us watts per meter squared. And if we put in the Earth-Sun distance, which I show here, and work this out, we'll get approximately 1,370 watts per meter squared at the Earth. So going back to the little diagram for the satellite, these solar panels will receive 1,370 watts per square meter, roughly a kilowatt per square meter of the solar panel. And so the solar constant, that is equal to the solar constant, so the solar constant at the Earth is equal to 1,370 watts per meter squared. That's at the Earth-Sun distance. If you were looking at renewable energy and you were saying, well, what's it going to be at the Earth's surface? You have to take into account the fact that the sunlight's going through the atmosphere. You lose a little bit going through the atmosphere. And, and a good number to, to use at the Earth's surface is approximately 1,000 watts or 1 kilowatt per square meter, roughly speaking, approximately.
Now, what would the power be, the power density be out at the distance of Pluto? Well, the 1,370 watts per meter squared is for the one astronomical unit that the Earth is from the sun. Pluto sun distance is 39.3 times further away. It will go as the distance squared. So if we take one astronomical unit corresponding to this value and divide it by 39.3 astronomical units for the distance to Pluto and work that out, we get approximately 0 0.9 watts per square meter at Pluto. And the reason I'm mentioning that what the solar constant is at Pluto is because there is a spacecraft heading towards Pluto it's the NASA New Horizons spacecraft that's going to arrive at Pluto in the summer of 2015. And unlike satellites around the Earth where there's plenty of power per square meter, there isn't enough out at Pluto for that New Horizons spacecraft to generate power to run its systems. So the New Horizon spacecraft has on board, instead of solar panels, it has what is called, NASA loves acronyms, RTG, and that stands for Radioisotope Thermoelectric Generator. And the working substance, the radioisotope that's used, is plutonium. So it's kind of interesting, and it's in fact it's plutonium 238. It's kind of interesting that plutonium is on its way to Pluto. So just to summarize it again, at the Earth, the solar constant is 1,370 watts per meter squared, and solar cells work well at the distance of the Earth from the Sun because that's a decent number. But out at Pluto, it's too weak, so you have to use some other sort of power source. And the radioisotope thermoelectric generator is the way to generate that power all the way out at 39.3 astronomical units at Pluto. So that's the story on the solar constant.